Morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. I know from my email that there's quite a lot of overlap between my audience and Brett Baer's on Special Report. I hope you were watching early last night when France's Minister of Economics and Finance joined Brett on set to sort of clean up on Isle America for President Macron's apparently green lighting or getting out of the way of Xi invading Taiwan. Good morning, Brett Baer. Welcome back to The Hugh Hewitt Show. Good morning. Now, you asked me last night what I thought of that interview. Now I get to ask you this morning, what did you <laughs> think of that interview? <laughs> well, the reason I asked you, you and Britt and Jessica, was because I, I clearly thought it was the finance minister walking that back or at least poor, trying to present that trip in a different way to an American audience. Um, I, I think the words of Emmanuel Macron, not only in China but to reporters afterwards, seem to be pretty clear, and uh, I think the finance minister was trying to make them a little bit more fuzzy. Uh, listen, they, they do have, there is a shift happening, and whether you concede it or not, uh, you're starting to see more and more countries make the trip to Beijing uh, and, you know, maybe equivocate a bit when it comes to Taiwan. The interesting thing about it is that they don't want to, when it comes to Russia and Ukraine, and that aggression, uh, because it's in their backyard. And that is, you drew that out of him. I'm amazed that there is a willful blindness going on to where we are with Taiwan. And I think we're on the brink of a world crisis. It's the second dress rehearsal in 10 months. Do many of your guests, do your executives, do your producers share that, my gosh, this might be 1940, 1941 stuff, and I just asked, Glenn Youngkin at length. Are we ready in Virginia? His answer is yes, we're studying that, but I don't think most Americans are ready for that. No, I, definitely most Americans aren't, and we as a country aren't. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, war games and simulations that say we're way behind on our ability to, to even help there, let alone how to respond. And I think that the administration has not been clear. I mean, I understand the ambiguity in the policy, but you, they've kind of taken it overboard <laughs> with the president saying, yes, we're sending troops to Taiwan if China goes in, and then the White House walking that back every time. Uh, I think there's a real concern in the inner circles. You know, I used to cover the Pentagon, and I still yes. talk to a lot of those folks, and um, I think they think we're closer than than we've been, um, but they're not sure it's it's imminent around the corner. But within a year, yeah. yeah, Admiral Stavridis keeps saying three to five years. He was on earlier today. I really respect the Admiral. He knows what he's talking about, former Allied Supreme Commander in NATO. But if it's not, the consequences to the United States, the consequences for Taiwan are terrible, but the consequences to our economy and to our security are even worse, and the possibility of going big is is there much more than actually Ukraine is by, by far yeah. a lot. And so last night we ended up talking about Tim Scott, I trotted out the Axelrod theory, which is if you're going to change presidents, you look for the personal qualities that were missing in the previous one or the previous two. Tim Scott does seem to fill that box to me, which is humble, engaging, warm, friendly, open, man of faith. What do you think about the Axelrod theory in Tim Scott's lane? Is Vice President Pence already in that lane? That's where I think the problem comes, in that there may be a number of people who fill that lane. Uh, and that will be the test. You know, obviously the former president is sucking up all the oxygen and all the poll numbers. Um, but there's not a, a sense that that's locked in. You know, there's a possibility that there is a tiredness, that there is a uh, move on from the chaos kind of feel to it. Uh, but when we get to a debate, the first one in August, I, I think that's going to be a big moment to see who is the person who is not uh, Trump uh, that rises to the top. Now, I, I've got to say, by the way, well played, Mr. Bond. Uh, Brett and the Fox News team landed the first debate again. And uh, those of us on, on the on the outside, <laughs> oh, doggone it, those sons of guns got the, what do you, what do you, are you starting already to figure this out? Because you don't even know how many people, I don't know how many people are going to be on the stage. Yeah, no, we're, we're praying that it's not as many. You know, I'd love to have not uh, two tiers as we did in Cleveland in 2015. Um, but remember, I mean, that was a big debate. And 
Uh, if it has to be, it has to be. Ideally, you're eight or fewer, and you have one stage, and you have more time. Uh, I think it'll be expanded from what we've done in the past as far as time-wise. And uh, we'll come up with the, you know, the RNC will provide the guidelines and the threshold, and we'll come up with the murder board to kind of go through. And as you well know, uh, the biggest challenge is to be fair to everybody, number one, to be tough but fair, and to, you know, let candidates have moments between each other. Uh, that's really what we're trying to get to. Now, what's interesting to me, Brett, is uh, you are the host of the most serious news show in America. That's a compliment. But you also have to get ready for a debate. Do you select a producer-director team early on and work with them daily, weekly? I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah no, it starts months in advance, and we'll... We'll start um, probably in earnest at the beginning of May. Uh, and yes, there'll be designated folks and um, we have research folks uh, and we'll kind of lay out, you know, buckets of topics and how we think the structure of the debate is going to go. The biggest question, as we just talked about, is how many and uh, how you have to plan for it. But the main one we know we'll be in is the former president. And, um, you know, he'll probably be center stage and, and as you know, he's a, an X factor when it comes to debates. You know, there are some sorts of prosecutors out there. I don't know if Jack Smith is one of them who would screw with the former president if he was headed to do a debate. I mean, they just would. That's what prosecutors do. It's what Rudy used to do with the perp walks with Wall Street people. Do you th has that crossed your mind yet that you got to prepare for the judicial system run by Jack Smith or in Georgia or in New York screwing with your yeah. debate? Yes. I mean, look, if if Brooklyn goes, if Manhattan goes all the way to fruition, if it gets that far, you're talking about January. You know, that's that's going to be right in the middle of pre, you know, New Hampshire, Iowa. So is it possible that something happens in August when this debate, the week of this debate, the day of this debate? Yes. And, um, you know, that changes maybe some questioning, uh, maybe, you know, some element of it. I'm sure other candidates are going to take the, the uh, line that we as a country can't afford to be keep keep going through this. Um, but right now, the the electorate seems you to be back in the former president and thinking he's being wrongly, you know, persecuted. Now, Brad, I want to close by talking about the leak story. The Washington Post has found the leaker before the FBI did. You think that's a story? Yes, it's a, a big deal. And, um, you know, they went through the gaming uh, folks and the platform, but um, I, I do think so. I mean, you would hope that the FBI and the criminal system had their eyes on, on this person already because of the, the clues, but it seems like the Washington Post has, um, has tracked it down. No, I'm just curious. I made a comment last night. What is the FBI doing? We have Chinese espionage all over the country. We've got gamers releasing classified documents that reveal methods and sources including a new satellite system it's a very devastating thing as we talked about last night and they're off running through joe biden's garage mike pence's house in mar-a-lago is that a good prioritization brett bear and maybe uh, catholic churches we'll see oh yes i forgot that. Um, so i i think that there is a big question uh and priorities for the fbi some of the questions i asked the fbi director uh, kind of lent, uh, led to that, uh, I, I think that there are real questions about their priorities, something that the House oversight is really going to zero in on. Well, Brett, thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure to be with you. As I say, the most serious news program left in America is Special Report. You should watch every night at 6. Thank you, Brett, for joining me. Tune in. Thank you.